Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Winship, bringing you guys another video, guys. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the 10 tips, the best 10 steps that you can actually use to getting more victory royales. Now, guys, this video is going to be kind of aimed towards dual victory royales. I know a lot of you guys want to know how to win more solo victory royales, but if you guys have a friend and you want to pick them up and play together, duos is definitely a lot more fun to play rather than solos. But if you guys do want those solo tips, give this video a thumbs up, show some love on the video, and I'll bring you guys a solo tip video next. But basically, we have like, we have like, I think, 10 videos on solo tips so i haven't brought a duo tip and trick video for you guys so i decided you know what today that's exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna give you guys the best 10 steps to winning more duo victory royales guys it's very easy me and bricky we actually went on a five win streak this morning like it literally was just five wins back to back to back to back i think we had like seven or eight wins that morning just that morning alone i think we lost like two games or three games and then we hit the rest of them we had all victory royales so if you actually follow these tips and tricks you guys you guys i promise you're gonna get more victory royales let me know down in the comments below if this actually works make sure to pay attention to everything i say and implement it into the game but with that being said let's get started number one the first tip is where to land you guys want to pick a spot that you're both very comfortable with you're both very familiar with and stick to that spot i know that a lot of people like to switch things up because it keeps the game refreshing landing at pleasant park or salty springs or greasy grove just switching it up because it keeps things different and refreshed but i promise you you want to keep landing at the same exact city every single time land there every time it doesn't matter if you die a lot at that place just keep landing there over and over and over again because the more you land there the more you'll get used to that city you'll you'll actually start learning in the city you'll learn what people actually do in the city and you'll just know everything about it you'll know where all the chests are you'll know exactly where everything is all the ammo crates and you'll be so familiar with that spot and area that you and your teammate it'll be like second nature that'll be like your your home base like if you guys don't know any sports people have like home games and away games that place that you go to will be your home field like you'll have home field advantage you'll know everything about it and you'll just just be able to memorize it so good to the point where you'll understand where people are pushing or what people hit next or what they do after they, they hit a certain house so again always land at the same spot with your teammate don't ever switch it up don't ever switch or land at a different house from your other teammate for instance if you guys want to land on the same house that's probably a good idea but keep in mind if you do land at the same house you're not going to get the best loot i'd say land right next to the other person and then listen for call outs if they say hey there's two people at my house either you go help them out or they bail out of that house and try to get to your house as quick as possible with that being said that brings step number two you guys gotta always be talking consistently talk to each other don't ever stop talking like give call outs anytime you see somebody give a call out let them know east west where they are the coordinates what house they're by stuff like that just always talk to your teammate make sure you're letting them know where they are what's going on if you're you're low on health if you're getting rushed if you're rushing somebody make sure you're letting them know this stuff because for instance say you're getting rushed by two people if you don't give the call out because you're so scared and you're, you're focused on the game your teammate will never know until you get downed and then it's going to be too late so make sure the second you see people coming against you instantly just call it out be like yo yo i'm getting rushed by two people your teammate should automatically help you out right away don't don't sit there if you're trying to loot still and your teammate's getting rushed by two people don't sit there and try and loot don't do anything literally stop what you're doing who cares about the rest of your house you can hit it after you help your teammate out and go help them out go get those kills you two 2v2 make it fun and interesting because the thing is is when there's two people rushing your teammate or something like that or you they're not going to expect your teammate to come from a different direction a different house so they're not going to expect him to come so when your teammate is getting rushed and he's building like crazy to protect himself you can literally sneak up on these two and actually put shots into him and let them start focusing you and then that's when your teammate steps in so it's going to be like a, a sandwich you're going to sandwich them and they're not going to know what to do and usually you're going to come out on top now moving on to step number three you guys we're going to be talking about stick together i i know i told you to land together and stick together that's not just the only thing i mean the whole entire game stick together never like split up across the map like say you take over pleasant park never have someone hit up one house and then the other person's on the corner of the map hitting up the other house at pleasant park never do that always stick together at least stay one house close to each other just in case because you never know in this game when you're going to run into people so say you just split up for like 10 seconds because you want to go get a shield pot across the map have your teammate come with you because you never know when you'll run into someone if you run into someone you're gonna want to have your friend there with you if you're alone it's gonna be a lot harder in a 2v1 situation because you're getting focused by two people while one may be rushing the other one could be shooting your base so that way you can't build enough and it's gonna be hard so always have your teammate with you no matter what I promise you it's gonna help out a lot moving on to step number four you guys it's what items do you each person have this kind of correlates with step number two communication but you want to let them know like hey I got shield pots I have two big pots I have ten baby pots you guys gotta know these things because you guys don't want to be 
stacking like say your teammate has seven baby pots and you have three baby pots you don't ever want to be holding those three baby pots because you can give that to your teammate to stack so that way you can actually have room to carry another thing like an rpg a grenade launcher uh extra med kit anything like that but you always want to make sure that someone on your team has neither shield pot uh med kit bandages something if you don't have any of that stuff i mean you can't find it that's fine but if you guys find like four big pots or something like that split it up two two split uh, or have one person carry all four and then the other person is going to carry the med kits or something like that just make sure you're talking to each other and letting each other know what you have so that way you're not over stacking things and that way it's like you guys can actually have your whole loadout filled with things that can actually help you within the game rather than just having three guns because you have two baby pots that you don't want to let go because your teammate has seven baby pots and he can actually carry those two so you can get an rpg so just make sure you communicate with your teammate and let them know what you have and let them know what you have or let them let you know what they have moving on to step number five guys step number five is actually huge whenever your teammate goes down you got to do everything you can to keep him alive go build around him go save him do whatever you can but you got to make sure he stays alive because if they kill him and down him it's going to end up becoming a 1v2 situation in every single gunfight no matter what after that so it's going to be a lot harder to win a 1v2 rather than a 2v2 in duo so again it's pretty obvious but a lot of people don't save their teammate if their teammate gets knocked they'll just sit there and build on their own go to your teammate automatically right away build the four corners around him and then get out of there build somewhere else or try and rush the other people or get aggressive but do whatever you can to make sure that your teammate stays alive and then you can worry about fighting the enemies now again a lot of people like thirsting in this game so that's why you got to be quick and stay close to each other because if you're far from each other and they knock your teammate and you're nowhere there to give cover fire they're gonna thirst him automatically so you guys got to stay close just don't let them thirst your teammate because if they thirst him again it's gonna be really hard to win moving on to step number six it's pay attention to what's happening now what i mean by this step is if you see two teams fighting or you hear two teams fighting look exactly where they're fighting at you got to know the locations of both teams rather than just rushing one team not knowing where the other one is pay attention to where they're looking because after you knock that team and kill that team you got to know that there's another team exactly where they were looking you got to focus that you guys are probably going to see it in the background playing sometimes there's going to be times where we sneak up on two teams fighting and then once we kill them we know exactly where the other team was because we paid attention to where they were looking you got to pay attention to everything every little detail in this game matters if you if you hear rpg shots you got to know that you're rushing a team with rpg so you got to be careful you don't want to stay out in the open you never want to go low ground advantage on anyone you always want to be high ground if someone has an rpg because if you go down low all they're going to do is shoot it at the ground and you're automatically dead so just pay attention to every little detail within the game step number seven is having a good sniper on your team guys this is very important if you you both don't want to really be sniping i mean you can it does help if you're both sniping but again at least having one decent sniper on your team is really clutch in duos you guys i ended up becoming the sniper within the team bricky never really sniped he's a good sniper but he never picked up a sniper to snipe because he'd rather have his inventory for like med kits and stuff like that and again it's about knowing what you and your friend has so that way you can actually have every arsenal weapon in the game you can have explosive a snipers assault rifles our shotguns any of that stuff everything is good to have so make sure you're paying attention to what you have and when you have a good sniper you can have somebody that's easily able to knock the other person so if you get a sniper shot and knock them it's automatically a 2v1 and it's going to be easy so that's why having a sniper on your team is really good because you can actually knock the enemy and then be able to have a 2v1 advantage and push them however you want step number eight is don't go for high kill gameplays i know a lot of people really like going out there and just trying to get a lot of kills in a game again this is not anything to show off you're really just trying to get a victory royale so yes if you get aggressive and you go for high kill gameplays you're gonna get better as a player but again it sometimes you can get screwed in situations where you rush two teams and then you end up fighting both teams and you're weak after killing both teams and then another team ends up coming up to you so again i say just play safe guys don't really go for high kill advantages do what you have to do to survive so if you see a team where a team starts shooting at you go ahead and kill that team but never like go in the middle of the map looking for anyone never go in the middle of the circles looking for anyone always hug the edges of the circle play it safe and smart high kill gameplays are only good for like commentaries or videos or anything like that if you're really just trying to get a victory royale again play it safe just do what you have to do with the kills step number nine is push together but different sides now what i mean by this one is don't push if you you and your friend are pushing a team of two don't ever push them both going the same direction do exactly what you guys are going to watch in the gameplay playing in the background split up like one person push to the right one push person push to the left so that way you can confuse the enemy the enemy can only focus on one direction if he's looking one way like north and he has two people coming at him he can always see what both people are he can see how far they are how close they're getting and anything like that so never do that always split up so that way the other person has to look right and left and he's never going to know how close you're getting because he's focusing on the other person and then you can sneak up on him and kill him so again 
it. I'm not saying like complete 180 flank around him. I'm just saying one push and when you're pushing them, one push and person push to the left of him, one person push to the right of him, and then you guys should be good to go. I mean, that definitely helps out a lot. A lot of people seem to mess this up when they're doing this. Never run off each other's ramps. So say someone builds a ramp, never follow your teammate up that same ramp. Go do your own style of pushing. Go push up with your own ramp. Go do your own building. And again, this helps out a lot because it, it, it distracts the enemy. They don't know exactly where to look. They don't know exactly who to focus. So it definitely helps out a lot. And step number 10 is play slow, you guys. Again, don't want to go for a high kill gameplay. What I mean by play slow is literally if you have to, once you take over your city, if you and your teammate has have good shields, good health, good mats, good weapons, play it extremely slow. Hide in houses, wait in houses, play at the very edges of the circle where you don't see anyone. Don't really go in the middle of the circle where all the action is. Hang out at the edges where it's very slow and make sure that no one's out there. But that's all the 10 tips that I have for you guys on how to get more victory royales. Guys, I promise you this will help out a lot. If you guys please can give this video a thumbs up, I appreciate that more than anything. And with that being said, thank you guys and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.